This is Elvis and she's an Abyssinian ground hornbill. You can find them on the grasslands of Africa. And as you can see, she has a beautiful wingspan. Even though um, they can fly, as you can see, they prefer to be on the ground running. They have three toes in the front and one toe in the back for perfect balance. And they can reach up to speeds of 15 to 18 miles an hour. On a good day, I can walk. They're going to, to be hunting for their food. They're going to go after smaller birds, rodents, um, and just unlike us, where we have teeth to chew our food, they're going to do something called a predatory slam. That's where they'll take their food and hit it against the hard surface over and over and over again until it becomes nice and tender. And because they'll be swallowing their food nice and whole. So to protect her brain from becoming a headache, because if I had to hit my head over and over again just to eat a meal, I probably wouldn't be eating much. If you notice on the top of her head, it looks like she has a broken horn. It's supposed to look like that. It's called an open cast. That's going to absorb all the vibrations from her smacking the food up against the hard surface, making sure she doesn't have any scrambled eggs. It also helps amplify her call. If you notice, Elvis may be making a hum humming noise because she's pretty happy. She loves to show off for people and she loves it when she gets her favorite treats as well. While she's up close, if you can see, she does have some gorgeous eyelashes. They're modified feathers to act just like our eyelashes. They're going to make sure no dust or dirt get into her eyes as she's running at top speed. 18 miles an hour, you want to know where you're, you're going. You don't want to run into a tree. Now, she's making all those beautiful noises and that call. They can have a territory of 10 square miles. So they'll be running around and also yelling at other ground hornbills, letting them know, hey, this here is my territory and everything in it. All of that yummy food is also mine. So that gold pouch right there, that violet color, um, is going to give them that beautiful sound. But it also tells us that she's a female. The males will have a bright red and the females have that beautiful violet. He had a 50-50. At a young age, they don't develop it until they're older. So we lost that bet. Yeah. But she lives up to her name. She can act amazing as she is doing today. And there's days where she'll take her food and she'll parade it around the whole stage, letting you know she got some tasty treats when just coming out. And sometimes it can become the Elvis show for 15, 20 minutes. And she's like, I'm going to see what I can get out of this. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Elvis, that we can say fun stuff like that. If you guys are welcome to come and join us if you like, we do ask that shoulders be left outside, but you are welcome to take a seat. I know the zoo is pretty big and we're happy to expand while we were shut down. And it's a lot of walking. So please rest and relax. That gives us enough time to grab our next animal. And for him, we're going to be traveling all the way to South America. And I'll give you a heads up, he is giant and he is hairy. So be warned. I'm telling you, I'm warning you now. So don't be surprised when he comes out. That or Elvis is making a show in the back. That's not, that's not our next animal. No. And it's not Mitch either. Mitch is not our next guest. But our next guest is giant and hairy. This here is Tank. So big, right? Well, I know he's not as big as I led you up to be. But out of the giant hairy, um, out of the hairy armadillo species, the giant hairy armadillo is the biggest. They live up to that hairy part of their name. As you can see, he has hair all over his back. It's not as thick as your dogs or cats, but it is there. And they also have hair on their tummy as well up their nose. Y'all like nose hair? <laughs> okay. okay, well my boat here is for Tank. Because like me, he's pretty close to the ground and that nose of his is even closer. It can be an inch to an inch and a half away from the ground. So as he's running around and digging, it can kick up all that dust and dirt. And to help make sure he's breathing fresh, clean air, that nose hair, as well as a spe special membrane is going to collect all that dirty stuff, making sure his lungs are filled with clean air. Now, speaking of that amazing nose of his, 
Armadillos, they don't have the best of eyesight, so they're going to be um, relying on their sense of smell. Right now, Tank is not looking for Mitch, she's actually smelling for him. Working with animals, I'm going to be honest, are she smell interesting at the end of the day? We're just going to use the word interesting. Yeah. So Tank knows that he follows that smell to that interesting place. He gets his most favorite treat. Now, how do your armadillos protect themselves? Walk and shout it out. You all right? They roll? Are y'all ready to see him roll through the ball? Like, he doesn't want to see him roll through the ball. I want to see him. All right, ready? One, two, three. That's a circle. Well, I'll be honest. There's only one species of armadillo that can actually roll up into that ball. That's the three-banded armadillo found in North America. Tank is the giant hairy armadillo found in South America. If you were to try to actually roll up into a ball, he'd look my, my most favorite food, an overstuffed taco. Not really helpful when he's trying to protect himself. So they have amazing grip and um, claws, and they're going to be digging into the dirt. That way, only that tough carapace will be shown. Amazing grip it is. Oh, and we rolled. Now, that way, none of that taco filling shown. Oh, this species of the armadillo is the most adaptable of the armadillo species. They can change when they sleep, when they can find their food. They're omnivores. They're not picky eaters. They like plant materials, but they love their protein, such as worms. Y'all like worms? You guys don't like gummy worms? Gummy worms are amazing. Y'all haven't tried sour ones, so that's probably it. Tank, he likes more of the wiggly kind. Yeah, that's a big difference. So if you can only find those insects at night, you'll become nocturnal. But most of the time they're crepuscular. They're awake at dawn and dusk. They're pretty smart. They're gonna be sleeping when it's nice and hot during the day. 